Uh, so the International Finance Corporation in Nigeria, a member of the World Bank, has signed a joint development agreement with Alton's Middle Band Solar One Limited, a Nigerian solar power company, to co-develop a 120 megawatt peak photovoltaic solar power project with a consortium of developers. That project will bring renewable energy supply to about 175,000 Nigerians living nearby in industrial clusters in Kogi State. Let's uh, get uh, SA, the IFC's country manager in Nigeria, Emi in law to talk to us via Skype. Good afternoon, madam. We appreciate your time. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Uh, this project is... Uh, Really, really new. We appreciate the fact that IFC is uh, involved. But let's start with the uh, monetary side of it. How much is it worth? What's the size? Well, it's a, bit, it's a bit early to say what the project cost will be. But given the, the total megawatts, it's going to be a 120 um, megawatt project. You can uh, sort of give it a sense of about $200 million. But it's really too, too early to give a precise amount in terms of project costs. So, this, you think, will bring power to the people in Kogi State? It certainly will. In fact, we're very excited about this. This is going to be our first solar project in Nigeria. Um, we all know that Nigeria needs to diversify its energy mix. We rely much too much on gas. And, um, and Nigeria has quite a bit of solar potential. So to be able to actually harness this potential and to create projects that will, we can actually now put that will actually put power on the grid is really an exciting opportunity. So absolutely, and it's great that we're able to, again, not only diversify away from gas, but also diversi diversify away from just one part of the country. So this project will be in, in the middle belt, and we see a lot more potential for projects in the northern part of the country as well. Yes, yeah, so the financial closing for this uh, project will be sometime towards the end of 2016. So how soon after that do you think, based on uh, the papers, the documentations and all that, how soon after 2016, December, do you think uh, this project will go switch on? That's a great question. In fact, solar is really exciting because solar um, only takes, in, in the developed world, about three to six months. Uh, for the construction period in, in Nigeria, I think we can maybe aim for about 12 months. Compare that to gas projects, which often take two to three years. So it's really the fastest way for us to add generation capacity to the grid. But, but, but hold, hold on, Essen. Uh, Rwanda just delivered something, if not bigger than this, in just about a year. So why can't we just get this done in a year? No, we absolutely can get it done in a year. I was making the point that we should be very excited about solar because solar projects can move quickly. Um, so absolutely, we should be targeting to get this project up and running from, and within 12 months of financial close, it's absolutely possible. The, the uh, whole idea of this project is to bring power to the people at the bottom of the pyramid, and, and that's what IFC is doing in many countries around the world, like in Africa, you supported a number of such uh, uh, initiatives. So at, the, uh, at, what, at what cost will this come to uh, Nigerians in the Middle Belt who will be enjoying this uh, in the about a year or two ahead from now? Well, hopefully, I mean, we should see this kind of project in terms of the benefits it will deliver. At the end of the day, the project costs will be borne by, by the developers. IFC will hopefully be an arranger um, and also an investor in the project once, once we get to that point. Um, and so, you know, the, what we will expect from, from the people of Kogi State, the people in the community, will be a partnership. Obviously, when we are building projects and we're partnering with, with developers to build projects like this, we need to make sure we have a very close relationship, a very good relationship with the community and community leaders. Um, they are going to be essential to ensuring that the project is up and running, that the project is successful. So, so hopefully we'll see benefits for, for the community there um, rather than, than really any costs. Uh, the press statement issued yesterday regarding this project states that you've received or this project has received the support of the host government, Kogi State. What support has the Kogi State government offered? Um, well, projects like this require really close collaboration with state government. So uh, the first thing would obviously be access to land um, at a very uh, at a location that makes sense for the project. So that's that's the, in the first instance what this project has received. And after that, it's sort of the typical types of licenses and certifications that are that are necessary. But first, first off, that, that type of partnership upfront, access to land, 
um, an agreement with the government that despite the, the, the subsequent governments that may come into place, that, that the project is at the center part of the, the state's development plan. And that, that is key to, to understanding from the promoter's perspective as well as the government's perspective. And we have that case here. So that partnership we, we think will persist well into the future. We really appreciate this conversation. I'm a MASA Law, uh, IFC Country Manager for Nigeria. We appreciate your time, madam. Thank you. Do have a great day. Okay, let's move on to Senegal. As the world leaders talk about global warming and climate change in Paris for at the United Nations 2015 Climate Change Conference, Senegal in West Africa is facing serious consequences of climate change. Let's look at how coastal erosion and other uh, challenges are impacting the country's tourism industry. Let's watch this. Northern winter is high season for tourism in Senegal. Europeans flock to its sea and sun to escape the cold. Yet since last year, the doors of the luxury hotel Espadon has been closed. The hotel beaches, which were once teeming with tourists, are now empty. As skeletons of old umbrellas burrow into the sand and the sea ignores are the foundations of its pretty beachfront rooms. The problem is not high prices or mismanagement, but coastal erosion at the hotel is not alone. Along the coast, the encroaching Atlantic has washed away beaches, forcing hotels to make a drastic choice, save their property by building sea walls that block the view, or let the water rise and risk losing everything. As the United Nations Climate Conference currently underway in Paris focuses on change in the environment, it is tempting to blame rising sea levels for the erosion. But reckless building on beaches also compounds the problem, said Papa Gumbo Lo head of the Senegal's National Research Center. There are several causes for coastal erosion. There are natural causes, with the most cited now being the rise in sea levels. But it is also due to the fact that we generally poorly landscape coastlines, meaning improperly...